Well, good morning. We want to uh, greet you as we're getting prepared for our Sunday school class today. We're going to give a few minutes for people to get together with us and to join us online. We're so looking forward to uh, being together with you in person. We know those days are, uh, are coming shortly. And uh, with all the changes that are taking place currently here in our state and uh, across the U.S. And so we're looking forward to being able to join together with you in person to be able to, uh, uh, I know what, the, uh, what Dr. Fauci says, but uh, we still are anticipating giving you a handshake and a big hug. <laughs> We're looking forward to those days and uh, we still hug our family. We still uh, kiss our loved ones at our house and so uh, you, you'll, you'll be safe with us. And uh, fortunately, none of us have been, uh, have been sick during this season, and uh, we're looking forward to the time of being able to join together again to study God's Word, but also to be able to worship together, to be able to sing and praise, and uh, to, to be together. Just being together is, uh, is such a comfort, such a blessing, and uh, we've missed seeing you in these, uh, this past month. And so we're looking forward to the uh, transition back into what we call uh, normal life. Now, they're saying that things may be different in the future, but we're looking forward to a full restoration, a full restoration of our American dream, of the, uh, of the life that we've come to uh, enjoy. And we're looking forward to that, uh, to regaining that. But while I, while I am saying that, I'm hoping that along with uh, a return to our normal, what we call a normal routine, you know, going to work, you know, going to school, our kids uh, being able to get out of the house and everything like that, we also want there to be an, a, a spiritual enlightenment and awakening that has taken place in your heart and in your soul and in your spirit. And so we hope you're using some of this time to get into the Word, to spend some time with the Lord daily, and uh, grow in Christ. Because it doesn't matter if we are separated, we still have access to this Word. We can get into the Word, we can pray, and we can draw closer to our Lord and to our Savior. And that is, uh, that is comforting to our soul, to our spirit man. It is... Uh, uplifting, and it's strengthening to our spirit man to be able to pray, to be able to call on the name of the Lord, to be able to spend time in his word. And uh, even you can put on some worship music in your house and enjoy that time of just uh, simply singing and worshiping to the Lord in your private, uh, in your private setting. And so we want to encourage you to take advantage of that uh, during this opportunity. I saw one of my friends had put on... Uh, uh, I think he posted it on Facebook where he had said he still uh, was looking forward every day to uh, his, uh, his morning coffee with the Lord. And so he was using this time and spending time with the Lord every morning in his devotionals and drinking some coffee. So if you have your coffee with you today, we hope that you're enjoying that or uh, any other uh, morning routine that you have. Maybe you drink a smoothie every morning. And, uh, or some orange juice. A lot of people still like the, uh, the morning orange juice. All the people from Florida, especially. Um, I'm thankful for the coffee. I enjoy that. Uh, not just in the morning, though. <laughs> Pretty much throughout the day. Well, we're glad that you've come to join us this week. And we want to uh, just uh, go ahead and get into our lesson today. And I want to invite and encourage you to invite the presence of the Lord right there where you're at. So let's begin with prayer and uh, just invite the Holy Spirit to be with us as we share the word together. Lord, we're thankful to get today that we can gather together. Lord, in a, in a, uh, in a different way, in a new way for most of us, but we're still gathering together in your name and with your word to study your word and to look to you as the author and the finisher of our faith. We pray that you'll give us uh, 
enlightenment today, that you'll open our eyes, that you'll open our understanding spiritually, and that you will help us to gain a new revelation of your word. Speak to us by the power of the Holy Spirit and enable us to grasp this word so that we can put it into action in our life every day, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's what we're praying for you, that you'll be able to grab a hold of the nuggets of truth that are found in the Word of God and put them into action in your daily life. And that will bring peace, comfort, and strength to your life and help you to fulfill God's calling upon your life. And so I wanted to recap a couple of the things that we went over last week. And we're actually, we're in Ephesians chapter 1 is the, uh, is the primary uh, scripture reference that we're looking at last week and again this week. And we, we learned last week that we, as believers, we carry the badge of Jesus' authority. So he's deputized us by his word and by his power to carry the message that he, he began, the message of the kingdom. And so that needs to be our message. I know that here in our church, that's the message we've been preaching for the last 10 years is the message of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has come and God is wanting to do a a work in your life, in your family, and uh, upon the earth, in your city, in your location. We've been praying for Spring, Texas. Uh, especially this year, we've been praying for the power of God to be revealed in Spring, Texas in a supernatural, in a supernatural way. We've been coming against the powers of the darkness of the enemy that we, that we fight spiritually. And so we've been praying for many throughout our community who are bound up, who are bound up by circumstance and situation, those who, who are bound by doubt, by fear, by drugs. We've been praying for them to be set free by the power of God and the glory of God revealed in their life in such a way that they experience a personal revival so we want you to experience a personal revival. Even during this time, during this season, you can experience such a personal revival in your life that you come out of this stronger and in a, in a position to do more for the kingdom than you've ever done. I know that uh, if your neighborhood's like ours, daily there are people as we go out, sometimes we've been out taking our, uh, our pet for a walk, our lovely little dog Zoe loves to go around the neighborhood. We'll walk around the park, and so we're seeing more people. We've met some new neighbors, you know, a lot of things like that. But it's also an opportunity to do some prayer walks in your neighborhood. As you go up and down the street and around your neighbors, you can be praying for them. You can pray the kingdom of God into your neighborhood. You can pray against the kingdom of darkness. You can pray against the rebel prince. And so that's what we're studying this week is how to defeat the rebel prince in your life and in your area. And so I wanted to uh, just recap Ephesians, the first part of it, because um, in, this, in this part, it gives us one of the main keys that we are in Christ Jesus. That's our new position as believers. We are in Christ Jesus. And this chapter, I'll tell you, is such an important uh, chapter in your spiritual life. It gives you some supernatural spiritual keys to overcoming and to living an overcoming life. But starting in verse 3 of chapter 1, let's recap that just a little bit. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him. Did you catch those two things? You've been blessed and you've been chosen. 
We want you to understand that. We want you to get a hold of that, that you'll understand you are blessed because God has blessed you. And you are chosen to do a work for him. And it's a work, it's not just something here lately, but it's something that God had in mind for you from the very foundation of the earth. He wanted to use you as a chosen instrument for his kingdom. Amen. Let's continue on. Verse 5, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So we've been chosen. We've been predestined to be in Christ, to be sons of the living God. Verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Do you feel accepted? Well, this word says that you are accepted in Jesus Christ. He loves you and he accepts you. And so I'm telling you today, this is such a, a pivotal message to know that you're blessed, to know that you're chosen, to know that you are accepted. You are accepted in the beloved. Let's continue. Verse 7, in him we have redemption through his blood. Praise the Lord. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound to us word. In all wisdom and prudence, having made, known, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. Verse 10, in that the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. We're looking forward to that the fulfillment of God's word. Verse 11, in him also we have obtained an inheritance. Do you know you have an inheritance? Whether you received an inheritance in the earthly realm or on this earth, whether you received an inheritance from your forefathers, your grandparents, or your parents, you have a spiritual inheritance. You have an inheritance that comes from God. And I want you to understand that, that you have a heritage, you have a supernatural spiritual heritage that you can grasp a hold of and realize just those things that, that, are, that are outlined in this chapter. You're blessed, you're chosen, you're accepted. That is a supernatural spiritual heritage. And I'm so hoping that as we go through and continue this lesson today, that you will be able to grab a hold of that so that it gets up here. It gets in your mind, and it gets in here. It gets in your spirit, so that you begin to believe what the Word says. This is the Word of God, and you need to believe it in your heart, and that will transform your life. It'll transform the way that you act. It'll transform the way that you go forward in life. And so I want to encourage you, grab a hold of this Word. Get a hold of it. So let's read that again. Verse 11, in him we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Verse 12, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. Your purpose is to live to the praise of his glory. Your purpose, I hope that you can see that you have a purpose and it's to Glorify God, not just with your praise and with your worship, not just with bringing your tithes and offering, not, not, uh, not only those ways, but on a daily basis, the way that you live, the way that you interact with other people, showing and fulfilling the love of Christ. If you are filled with the love of Christ, I'm telling you what, it's going to change the way that you interact with people. If you're filled with the love of Jesus Christ, you're going to be a little less worried about self. You're going to be a little less worried about what you want. And you're going to become, you're going to, you're going to become more kingdom-centered and kingdom-purposed. And I'm telling you, when you get your eyes set on Jesus Christ and fulfilling his purpose for your life, it'll transform the person that you are and you will begin to demonstrate the works of Jesus Christ. You'll begin to love others. 
You'll begin to show that love. You'll begin to minister that love. And that life that you receive from Christ will begin to flow out of you. So I'm just telling you today, I want this to transform your life, the way that you think and the way that you act, the way that you interact, even with your spouse. Wow. <laughs> I'm bringing it home now. I'm bringing it home that when you're at home and it's just the two of you, you should still show forth the love of Jesus Christ. It, that, that love that you receive from Christ should still be found in your voice. The grace that you find from Jesus Christ should be seen in your life and the way that you interact with your spouse, your children, even your pet. <laughs> Can you even believe that? Your pet will know if you're saved, I'm telling you. <laughs> your dog's gonna know if you've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> We're getting real here. I'm telling you, this is real, and it's real life. That's, this word is applicable to your life today, right where you're at. And if you're saying, what in the world is he talking about? How, and how, how does this come together? Well, then you need to keep listening. If, it, if that's not making sense to you, then you need to, to, to cue in here. Come in, focus in, and let's look at the richness of this word because I want to read just a little bit more right here in this first part. And then we're going to get into the, the second part of this chapter. I'm saying all of that's in the first half of this chapter. So let's continue on. Verse 13, In him you also trusted after you heard the gospel of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom you believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Wow. You've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit is not going to let you go. You can't just go your own way and, and just live your own life. After you've accepted this word and after you've received the word of God into your life and that Holy Spirit comes into your life, that Holy Spirit does an action. He does a work in your life, a work of sealing you for the kingdom. And so you'll never be satisfied once you've tasted of the word of truth You'll never be satisfied once you've tasted of the kingdom of God to go live in the kingdom of darkness. And so I'm telling you today that you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and God is calling you to live out this gospel. God is calling you to fulfill his call upon your life, his work in your life. And so allow the Holy Spirit to fulfill the work that he's began within you. Let's look at this a little further. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom you also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. So you have a guaranteed inheritance. You know that those who are adopted can't be unadopted. <laughs> Those who've been adopted into the kingdom, they have a guaranteed inheritance. And so I'm telling you today, once you've accepted Jesus Christ into your life, the, the way to, to fulfillment, the way to fullness in life is to go deeper into Jesus Christ, is to go deeper into the kingdom of God. It's to go deeper in the word of God till you get a greater revelation, a greater understanding of his specific call on your life and on your family, on your children, and on your children's children because the blessing that you've received is not just for you, but it's a supernatural spiritual blessing that is to be passed down from generation to generation to generation. So not only are you called to the kingdom, but your children are called to the kingdom for such a time as this. Your children's children are called the, to the kingdom for their day. And so today, it's so vital that we pray, that we pray not only for our life, not only for our spouse, but we pray for our children, that we pray for our grandchildren, that we pray for those generations that are to come because we want this gospel of the kingdom to be spread around the world. But it starts right here for us. It starts right here in Spring, Texas. It starts in our household. 
It starts in our household of faith. So today, as a part of Family Life Christian Center, we're believing for all of the families of this church to be blessed, to be supernaturally, spiritually blessed, that they'll experience a personal revival that will touch their family, that will touch their children and their children's children. So we want to see this message of the gospel, this gospel of the kingdom, reflected in the lives of the families of family life. And as we do that, we'll be able to touch the neighborhoods of Spring, Texas. We'll be able to touch all of Spring, Texas. That we'll be able to take the gospel of the kingdom to our neighbors, to our co-workers, to all those that we come in contact with. So that's why as a church and as a body, we've been praying against the rebel prince. We've been praying against the, the spiritual counterfeits that are in the heavenlies. They're trying to take dominion over this area. But guess what? Jesus Christ is enthroned at the right hand of the Father with all power in heaven and earth, and he has all dominion. He has all power. And as his... As, as receiving his spiritual inheritance today, you and I are to, are to go about sharing that gospel. But we not only share the good news, but we share his authority. His spiritual authority, we share it. And so when we pray against the spiritual powers in Spring, Texas, we have power and authority in Jesus' name. When we pray against spiritual powers that would come against our family, we have authority in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we can do great things. We can do great works. So let's read on just a little bit further, and that's, that's going to close up our recap, and we're getting into the, uh, the, the next portion of our lesson. This is all found in the same chapter. It's in chapter 5 of The Bondage Breakers, what we've been studying in our Sunday school class. And so we're going to carry on with that today. But we're going to look at today delegated authority and delegated responsibility. Delegated authority, that's what we have from Christ. But along with that authority comes a spiritual responsibility. So that's why we're concerned about praying for Spring, Texas. That's why we're concerned about praying for our family because we have a spiritual authority. But with that authority comes a responsibility a spiritual responsibility, not only for our life, but for our family, for our children and our children's children. And so we want to pray for the supernatural power of God to be revealed in our lives, in our family, in our children, and in those around us here in this community. So we're praying for a supernatural revival to fill this city but that will expand across this nation. And I know that you've heard uh, others preaching and teaching that same message. They're looking for a great awakening, another great awakening to go across this nation and around the world. And so we're joining together praying for that. But our mission starts right here. Our mission starts right here where we're at. So let's look at this in verse 15. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Amen. Paul prayed this prayer generations ago that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And so that's what Paul prayed for us. That's a part of our spiritual inheritance, that we'll begin to walk in that wisdom, that we'll begin to attain the supernatural spiritual revelation how do we receive that? How do we attain to that? By getting into this word, by praying, Lord, let this word be fulfilled in my life. Fill my mind, fill my understanding with your wisdom. Fill me with your revelation. 
Let it be seen in my life. Let me have a greater understanding of your word. Let me have a greater understanding of your call upon my life that you called me out of darkness into your marvelous light for such a time as this, for such a day as this, to do your good works, to do the, the good works that you called me to. Now, this brings us up to, to where we're at today, but I want us to share just a little bit of, about this, this whole thought of delegated authority. As we talked about last week, we've been authorized. We've been deputized, so we carry the badge of Jesus' authority in this earth and in our lives we have been delegated authority by the Word of God. And so we, we need to come, we need to have a revelation of that. We need to pray, Lord, give me wisdom concerning this. Give me an understanding about this. But listen to this. Everything that we have is the result of our intimate, personal relationship with the resurrected Christ and His indwelling Spirit. But the problem is, we don't see it. The problem with so many Christians that are filling our churches today across this nation is they don't see this revelation. They don't see this understanding that they have been given authority. And so they're not walking in that authority. They're not exercising that authority. They're not taking dominion because they don't, it somehow... They've missed that revelation. They've missed that. And so today, one of our, our central goals and central purposes in this lesson today is to get that understanding across that you, as a believer, have been given authority to use the Word of God. You've been given authority to pray in the name of Jesus, to make declarations in the name of Jesus that are life-changing, life-changing for you, life-changing for your children, and life-changing for this nation. Because as we, as the body of Christ across the nation, begin to pray in the power and the authority of Jesus Christ, then we will see change. We'll see change in society, in culture. Listen, culture is not supposed to be shaping the church. The church is supposed to be shaping culture. The church, the body of Christ should be shaping the belief system of this nation. We're called to that. We're given the authority by the Word of God. And so our, our challenge is to rise up to that, to get that understanding so deep within us that it changes the way that we reflect the Word of God in our life and in our actions and in our speech. So that it changes the way that we talk. It changes the way that we communicate. And that brings us to today's lesson. And that is right where we're at, right here in verse uh, 19. But we're, we're going to read uh, verse 18. Ephesians chapter 1, 18 through 20. 18 through 20. And so this was the continuation of Paul's prayer. It said, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints? As I mentioned earlier, you have an inheritance. You have a supernatural, spiritual inheritance that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's power and authority to live the word and to fulfill the word. You have that inheritance. But verse 18, I want us to focus on that. His prayer was that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. And today, I'm hoping that message is coming through to you. That you're getting an enlightenment that the Word of God has been given to you and to your family and to your children to empower you, to enable you to live an overcoming Christian life. Listen, we, we don't want to live, as I mentioned last week, we don't want to live a casual Christian life. I love that song back when DeGarmo and Key came, came out with it. Back in the 80s. Ooh, what, that's, a, that's a ways, that's a long time ago. I know it, but it, it, was, a, it was a powerful message. 
in that song, said, I don't want to live. I don't want to live a, a casual. I don't want to be a casual Christian. I don't want to live a lukewarm Christian life. What does Jesus say about the lukewarm in Revelation? Ooh, it wasn't a good message. It wasn't a good message. He said he would spew the lukewarm out of his mouth. And so I want to be filled with the power of God. I want to be filled with the Spirit of God. I want to gain this spiritual enlightenment that Paul is talking about here in verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. I want you to grasp a hold of it today that you have a spiritual inheritance that's been given to you by the Lord our Savior. A supernatural spiritual inheritance of overcoming. Jesus Christ overcame. He overcame death, hell, and the grave. So let me tell you what. In your life, you can overcome the enemy because that enemy has already been defeated by our Lord and Savior. And so because of that, we get to enter into his triumph. We get to enter into his overcoming victory. It should change the way that you think. It should change the way that you have an understanding. And so let's look. Verse 19, what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? If you're a believer, there's an exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. According to the working of his mighty power, verse 20, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. That's the heavenly father. He worked in Christ. He raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places. And this is a key right here. This is a key to your understanding. Verse 21, far above, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every named that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. So that pretty, that pretty much covers all the bases right there. That tells us the position of Christ our Lord and Savior. He's been enthroned above, above all, at the right hand of the Father, and he has power over all, over every dominion, over every principality, over every power, over every nation, over every thing. And his name is the name that is above all names. So I want you to get a hold of that and get a hold of that, that that will be a foundational scripture in your life and in your spirit and make that a part of your prayer life that I believe in Jesus. And I believe that Jesus has all power in heaven and in earth. And it's been delivered unto him. And he is today, he's still today reigning over all. And he has all dominion. He has all power. That in includes all power of the devil. All power of every demonic force. Jesus Christ is elevated above all, above all those powers. And so they're not, they're not equal fighting back and forth right here. Jesus Christ is above all. His power is over all. And today, as a part of his body, the church, we need to begin to get a, a grasp of that, an understanding of that, so that we can begin to exercise, as his deputies, we can begin to exercise his power on the earth to take dominion, to take dominion in every circumstance and situation, to begin to pray. We need, the body of Christ needs to rise up. You've heard that song, Let the Church Rise, such a powerful song, but we need to see a, a living example of that today, that the church needs to rise up in prayer. But the first, the first thing, before we're going to defeat the enemy, we have to understand who we are. We have to understand the power that has been delegated to us 
And along with that power comes a responsibility, a responsibility for our family, a responsibility for our children, a responsibility for our children's children. And then, and then look outside your house and see, wow, I have a spiritual responsibility to reach out to my neighborhood. I have a spiritual responsibility to reach out to Spring, Texas. I have a responsibility to be a light in the darkness shining, shining in this area, shining in the darkness, allowing the Holy Spirit to work in my life to transform me, to transform the way that I think, to open my understanding, to fill me with wisdom, to fill me with revelation, and to enlighten my eyes so that I can see that I've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. And when we're enlightened by the power of the Holy Spirit, we begin to see that we have a responsibility to reach out to those that are around us. And as I mentioned earlier, we, you know what happens is we get our focus off of, oh, me. Oh, uh, I'm, just in a, oh I'm just in this circumstance. I'm in this situation. But, you know, when we begin to read the Word of God and we begin to look to the Word, when we begin to look at Jesus and re remember that He's the author and the finisher of our faith, that He's began a good work in us for a purpose and He's going to fulfill that work. So when we get our eyes on Jesus, it takes us back to Matthew and it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And so I want to encourage you, get a new focus. Get a new focus this week. Set your eyes on Jesus. Set your eyes on the word of God and the omnipotence of his word and of his power. And all of these things that we're going through will be a little less heavy weighing on your, your soul or your spirit or your life. But as we begin to, to look to Jesus... Then we gain new understanding and a new realization that we have the power to overcome these light afflictions, as Paul put it. And think about, Paul went through shipwreck, he went through imprisonment, and he still called those things light afflictions. <laughs> wow, wow, in our life, what, what light afflictions have you been through? I want to encourage you, set your eyes on Christ. Set your eyes on Him. Amen. I'm telling you, this word right here, this, this first book, this first chapter of Ephesians is a powerhouse, and it should be a powerhouse in our life. But I want to encourage you. You know, if we don't understand our spiritual inheritance, then we're not going to exercise the freedom and the fruitfulness, which is intrinsic to our position in Christ. In Christ, this chapter tells us all about it. We are in Christ. In Christ, we're blessed. In Christ, we have an inheritance. But we have to understand. We have to get into the word enough that we have an understanding of that. We have to pray, Lord, open my understanding. Open my eyes and help me grab a hold of this spiritual inheritance that you've blessed me with so that I can become all that you call me to be so that we'll begin to understand it so that we begin to live it out. So you have a delegated authority and you have a delegated responsibility. I want you to get a hold of that today. So, uh, you know, uh, in this chapter, you, I want to encourage you to continue if, if you've never really gotten into Ephesians chapter 1, I want you to make it your devotional this week and begin to, to go verse by verse and pull out all that it says about you and about your spiritual inheritance and about your spiritual authority because as a, as a believer in Jesus Christ, you also share in the inheritance of his spiritual authority. And you have a calling upon your life to do so. So, uh, let me look here. Verse 22, he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, 
which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. He put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. So that's the, that's the, the flow chart of authority in the church. Jesus Christ is the head. And then down under, under Christ are the pastors, teachers, evangelists, and then the body. And so today, as a part of the body of Christ, I just want to, to remind you that you have a spiritual inheritance. You have a supernatural spiritual inheritance that you've been called to, to be a partaker in, to be a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And so I want to encourage you and remind you that there's a depth and a breadth of authority. Ephesians chapter 19, 19 through 23, Paul explains the source of Christ's authority as the same power that raised him from the dead and seated him at the Father's right hand. So the power source is so dynamic that Paul used four different Greek words in verse 19 to describe it. And I'm, I'm going to tell you the translation because all of those Greek words are literally Greek to me. And uh, they're a challenge for me to pronounce. But this, this is the, the, uh, the translation. He described it as power, working, strength, and might. Behind the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ lies the mightiest work of power recorded in the Word of God. And the same power that raised Christ from the dead and defeated Satan is the power available to us as believers. So that same power, if that same spirit dwells in you, it'll quicken your mortal body. I'm telling you today, the same power that raised up Christ from the dead is available to you as a believer today to help you walk as an overcomer. And I'm telling you that if Jesus Christ can overcome death, hell, and the grave, you can face the challenges in your life. And you can walk and live as an overcomer, victorious in the way that you live. Victorious. Paul wants to open our eyes to the expressive scope of Christ's authority, which is far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. Wow, that's real power. That's true power. So think about this. The next portion of our, of our lesson, it says, authority conferred. Jesus' authority is not only above human and spiritual authorities, past, present, and future, but he is far above them. He's far above them. And Paul is saying that Christ's power and authority has been conferred, verse 119, conferred on us who believe. So Christ's power and authority has been conferred on us. He's given us a portion of his inheritance to live out our life on this earth. And so we can walk and we need to go forth as his delegated authorities in the earth to do the works of Christ. To share the word of God. To share the truth of the gospel. And to preach the gospel of the kingdom to this nation and to this world and to people around the world. There are other nations that have still never heard the gospel message. And so we have a group that we're, that we're a part of and we work with, MCI, missions, and they, their whole purpose is to go to unreached people groups. And so as being a part of that missionary effort through our prayers and through our financial support, we're a part of their ministry to reach out to, to unreached people, people around the world who've never heard the gospel message. And so they have the, their whole uh, ministry is raising up people in those local areas and then sending those people out. And so what we can do from here, here in the U.S., we can pray for them. We can pray for their ministry. We can pray for their 
missionaries that they're sending out into their local communities. And so we're reaching our local community and they're reaching their local community. We can, we can help them and support them through finances, but one of the biggest things that we can do is give our prayer support and pray, pray for those missionaries. Pray for doors to be opened for them. Pray over their spiritual locations that the spirits and authorities over those areas will be defeated supernaturally by the power and the angelic forces of God. So we, we not only pray for our region, pray for our area, we can begin to be prayer missionaries and pray for people around the world. We can make it a part of our daily and weekly prayer, prayer life to pray for those areas with unreached people groups. So uh, another thing I wanted to cover in this says, after parenthetically alluding to the sinful state in which we existed prior to salvation, Paul continues his central theme of Christ's authority as it relates to us. God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ. Paul wants us to see that when Christ was raised from the dead, those of us who believed in him were also resurrected from our condition of spiritual death and made alive together with Christ. So as Christ was being raised up, we, the future body of Christ, was being raised up even then. The work is already done. The work, the supernatural work. So we've been raised up together with Christ. The resurrection of Christ from the tomb and our resurrection from spiritual death happened at the same time. Wow, can you even believe it? Can you even imagine it? It's only logical that the head, the Christ, and the body, his church, should be raised together. Furthermore, when God seated Christ at his right hand and conferred all authority, conferred on him all authority, he also seated us at his right hand because we are together with Christ. So positionally, we're talking about spiritually, our spiritual position. Our spiritual position is that we are seated together with Christ in heavenly places. So we are heirs and joint heirs with him, and he's conferred his authority on us so that as we are fulfilling our life, we need to fulfill it understanding we have the authority of Christ, the authority that's been given to us by him, for him, for his kingdom, and for such a time as this. For such a time as this, think about Esther. She was raised up for a specific time, for a specific season. And she fulfilled her purpose. She fulfilled her purpose. My question to you today, are you fulfilling your purpose? Are you fulfilling your kingdom calling that God has placed upon your life? That's why we're going through this is to give you a full understanding of the authority that Christ has conferred upon the body of Christ so that we can do his works, so that we can fulfill our purpose. And we're called for such a time as this. We're called for such a time as this when there's a coronavirus that's got people scared out of their mind all around the world. As the body of Christ, guess what? We don't have to be partakers in that fear but we have a realization that we have a supernatural God who's called us for a, such a time as this. And so we don't have to be afraid, but we put our trust in Jesus Christ. We put our confidence in Christ. The Lord will be our confidence and keep our foot from being taken. That's what the word says. That's what the word says. So I want you to understand you have a purpose. You have a calling. The other thing I want to cover, we, we have just a few minutes left, and um, I want to cover a couple of things here. And, but Paul goes on in, in, in the book of Colossians, in chapter 2, verse 10. It says, In him you have been made complete, and he is the head over all rule and authority. We have been made complete. When? At the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus. 
And since Christ is the God-appointed head over all rule and authority, and since we are seated with him in heavenly places, we have power and authority to do his will. And I want to tell you that in case you've never heard it or never realized it, you have power and authority to do the will of Jesus. You don't have to live subjected to your carnal nature. But we put to death and we crucify the carnal nature and we live to Christ. And because of that, we have power and authority to do his will. You don't have to, to be subjected to your carnal nature to do the things that your old man is calling you to do, but as a, as a, as a spirit-filled, believing Christian, you have the resurrection power of Jesus Christ working in you, and that power gives you the power to do the will of of Jesus Christ, to do the works of Jesus Christ. So I want to mention one last thing here before we, before we close, before we go into our close. Paul mentioned something else in Colossians that we need to know. He disarmed the rulers and authority and made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him. Jesus Christ disarmed powers and authority. He disarmed the devil. Remember last week, we, we talked about that Jesus had defeated Satan. Satan is a defeated foe, but if he can, if he can trick, if he can manipulate, if he can lie to people, he'll maintain authority over them. But as a believer who has our understanding and our eyes opened to the realization that we have been given power and authority in Jesus Christ. We do not have to be dominated by the old nature, by the old man. We don't have to allow the enemy to have dominion in our life. And so I want to encourage you today, get a hold of this. So after you're, after you're done with Ephesians, <laughs> your, your devotional this week in Ephesians chapter 1, then you can move on to Colossians chapter 2 says, not only were you made alive in Christ, but Satan was disarmed and defeated 2,000 years ago. His defeat is not pending, it's, nor is it future. It has already happened. It is our responsibility to defeat the devil. It's not our responsibility to defeat the devil. Jesus has already done that. When we begin to realize that and get a hold of that, Jesus has already, he's already done the work. He's already defeated the enemy. And so we have to win the battle for our mind. And we can't believe the lies of Satan. We can't allow his lies to dominate our mind or our spirit. If Satan is already disarmed, why, why don't we experience more victory in our life? Because the father of lies has deceived the whole world. We read that last week. The father of lies, he's deceived the whole world. Satan roams around like a hungry lion looking and sounding ferocious. But in reality, his fangs have been removed and he's been declawed. But if he can deceive you into believing that he can chew you up and spit you out, then you'll live as though he can. So the ultimate purpose of this conferring of authority is for you to realize the authority that you have in Christ. It says, in order that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the rulers and authorities in heavenly places. Do you know that God has a supernatural purpose in that, in this? And that is that his body should be making known the mystery of the gospel and the mystery of the gospel of the kingdom to rulers and authorities. That's what this, this verse says right here. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8 through 12. It says, To me, the very least of all saints, this grace was given to preach the gospel to the Gentiles, the unfathomable riches of Christ, to bring to light what is the administration of the mystery, which for ages was hidden, who created all things in order, listen to this, key in on this, in order that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church, through the church, through the body of Christ, 
by the body of Christ. This wisdom, the manifold wisdom of God, might be now, might now be made known through the church. So we as believers, we're supposed to be making this known. We're a living revelation of the power of Christ to make known his power and his authority. And it says, who are we supposed to make this known to? To the rulers and authorities in heavenly places. We as the body of Christ are to make this known. We are to overcome the rebel prince by the authority of Jesus Christ, by the power of God Almighty, not by our own strength, not by our own works, but by the strength of Jesus Christ by the works of Jesus Christ that he has already performed, that he has already defeated the enemy. And so we make it known. Do you know when those disciples, when the one set of disciples went out and they confronted the, uh, the demonic power, or it was just, I believe it was some people who had heard about it, so they went out and they were going to display God's power. And the, the, the demon talked back to them and said, they've heard of Christ, they've heard of of John, but they didn't know these individuals. But today, by the power of Christ, that's why it's so important that you have a supernatural spiritual prayer life, that you get in the Word, that you get an understanding of who you are so that you can be known by the power and by the revelation of the Word of God. You need to understand and know who you are in Christ and as you, as a part of the body of Christ, get a hold of that revelation, I'm telling you what, it'll change the way you talk. It'll change the way that you walk. It'll change the way that you pray. Even your prayer life will change because you'll begin to pray with power and authority. You'll begin to pray in a supernatural way. So I want to tell you today, you are qualified to do kingdom work. You are qualified as a believer to do kingdom work. And here's four principles. I've just got a very short time to share these four points. But listen, it's number one is belief. You have to believe it. You have to believe the word of God. It says his power toward us who believe, Ephesians 1.19. The second one is humility. You begin to walk in a humility. Humility is confidence properly placed. Humility is like meekness, which in this case, when the case of Christ was great strength under control. And so humility says, I assume my responsibility to resist the devil by the grace of God. It's by the grace of God I can do his works. Number three is boldness. Number three, it's a mark of a spirit-filled Christian to be strong and courageous. Joshua was, was challenged four times to be strong and courageous. Joshua was challenged four times to be strong and courageous. And so today I want to encourage you to, as a believer, be strong, be courageous, be bold for the kingdom of God. Do bold deeds and daring acts. That's what it says in Daniel. The people that know their God will be strong and do bold deeds, bold things for God. Amen. Amen. The righteous are bold as a lion. That's what it says in Proverbs 28, verse 1. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and discipline. 2 Timothy 1, 7. So be bold for the kingdom. Amen. We are living in an age of anxiety. If you're struggling with any kind of anxiety, you need to understand you need to have a new understanding that Jesus, Jesus gives us the power. The fear of God is not only the beginning of wisdom, but is the one fear that can expel all others. When we respect God Almighty, when we glorify God Almighty, when we begin to understand who he is and the power of his authority, it gives us power over all others over all the power of the enemy. And then the last one is the dependence. Dependence. The authority we're talking about is not an independent authority. 
We have the authority to do God's will, nothing more and nothing less. You have the authority to do God's will. You can live for Christ. For Christ. You can walk as an overcomer. You can. You can do it through the power of the Holy Spirit working in your life. So you can live free from fear when we boldly and humbly exercise the authority that Christ has conferred upon us over the spiritual realm. We experience the freedom we have all been called to in Christ Jesus. And so I want to encourage you, walk in freedom. Walk in freedom. Last week, we, we prayed through these, who I am in Christ. We want you to understand who you are in Christ so that you can live in the authority of the Word of God, so that you can walk as an overcomer, so that you can do the works of Jesus that you've been called to do, that you've been called out to do, kingdom works, preaching and teaching and sharing the Word. You've been called out. So today, as we close, I'm going to read a couple of these confessions that we have uh, we used them when we had the healing rooms in the other building. We had, uh, for a season, we had healing rooms that were open. We prayed for, for many that came from our community, Kingwood, other parts of Houston. People came, and we would pray for them for healing in their life. And so I want you to begin to understand. If you need one of these uh, bookmarks, if you will make a comment in the comment section, uh, Michelle or Kath, We'll send one of those out to you. They'll be glad to do it. And it'll help you understand who you are in Christ Jesus. And just the same, if you need a, a healing scripture confession, if you're fighting a, a, a physical affliction in your body, begin to pray these spiritual confessions and begin to realize and understand the power you have in Christ. Well, it's time for us to close. Let me just read just a couple of these as we close. I release unforgiveness and strife from my life. I choose to forgive others as Christ has forgiven me. For God's love has been shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Spirit. Jesus bore my sins in his own body on the tree. Therefore, I am dead to sin and alive unto righteousness, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And by his stripes, I'm healed and made whole. All of these are powerful. And so we want to encourage you, get a copy Begin to read them. Begin to declare them in your life. Begin to get a greater understanding of who you are in Christ Jesus. Lord, we just pray that your word will go out, that it will strengthen believers, that, it'll gain, that they will gain a new understanding of who they are and that they are called for such a time as this, as this right now in the kingdom to be a partaker of the word, to be a participant in the kingdom. And so, Lord, we just pray blessing, we pray anointing, and we pray full revelation of your word on these believers today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining us. Join us in uh, just a few minutes at 1030. Join us together for worship and for praise and for the word of God from Pastor Scott. Thanks for coming.